so everybody, um, I think everybody's very well aware that uh, the second part of the peace deal is being rolled out at the end of this month, and they're going to be doing animal sacrifices on the Mount of Olives at the end of this month. Um, they're, the UN is going to be gathering together to do the Noahide laws, and they're inviting 70 other countries. There's a lot of prophetic things that are going on this month. If this peace deal, which is supposed to roll out in a week or two, is the peace deal of Thessalonians, if it's the same peace deal, well, then uh, let's read. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden, destru then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day that, that day should overtake you as a thief. Okay. Revelation 6 talks about the seals being broken open. <clears throat> Second seal heard a beast come and uh, say, come and see. And there went out another horse. It was red. Power was given to him to take peace from the earth. So look at the world events that are happening right now. And they should kill one another. Look at all the mass shootings. And then it was given to him a great sword. When he opened the third seal, and lo, so a, scale, a pair of scale and balances can represent the economy or injustice. Fourth seal, there was a pale horse, and Hades and death followed. And they were given authority over a fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and hunger and death and wild beasts of the earth. And we get to the sixth seal, okay? Those things could and possibly are happening uh, right now. But when you get to the sixth seal, lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. Black as sackcloth of hair. This isn't an eclipse. This is talking about. And the moon became as blood. Okay, this isn't talking about the the lunar eclipses and the stars of heaven fell into the earth even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled up together okay so the veil is going to be pulled back and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief, captain, chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens of the rocks of the mountains. So they went into their bunkers and their caves and their, in the mountains. And they were so afraid that they said, they wanted the rocks to fall on us and hide us from the one who sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So they're seen. The day of the Lord. When they say peace and safety, sudden destruction. Sudden destruction. Who shall be able to stand? If this is the peace deal, you guys, that is about to happen, then sudden destruction happens. And it's funny 
that we're seeing similarities in what's going on in the world, all the shootings, all the famine, et cetera, et cetera, the things going on in Africa, that it seems very consistent with these seals up here. But then when you get to the sixth seal, this is something the whole world is, you guys, this will change the world forever. This is not spiritual right here, you guys. This is a very physical thing. When the veil gets pulled back in heaven and people can see the one who sits on the throne, this is all physical. Okay? Then you go into Matthew 24. Famines, pestilences, earthquakes, and diverse places. These are the beginning of sorrows. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all, names, nation, of all nations for my name's sake. This is what happens after these earthquakes and pestilences and famines. Delivered up. Okay. Let's look in Luke 11. Bless ye, but he said, ye rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it, which is guard it and protect it. And when the people were gathered thick together, so when they started having, you know, bigger gatherings, he began to say, this is an evil generation. So in these gatherings, once somebody began to say, this is an evil generation, and they seek it after a sign, and there shall be no sign given but the sign of Jonas the prophet. So in these gatherings, this is what somebody said. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. So what did Jonah do in Nineveh? Jonah was was picked by God to go to the Ninevites and tell them, you guys, if you don't straighten up your act, if you don't turn from your sin, you, this whole town is going to be destroyed physically. And everybody in the town put on sackcloth and ashes and repented, even the king, which would be like the president, you know. Um, they all repented. Okay? But the Son of Man, for this generation, is going to be doing the same thing. Saying that if you don't repent, if you don't turn from your sins, this whole place, this whole world is going to be destroyed. The heaven will be departed as a scroll. This is physical, you guys. The heaven departed as a scroll, and every mountain and island are going to move out of their place. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every free man hid themselves in the dens of the rocks, saying, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. The Son of Man is going to do the same thing that Jonas is doing. The Son of Man is picked by God to do the same thing that Jonas is doing, that Jonas did. Now I remind you, when they were talking about this, this was post after Jonas. This is for the end times. Then the queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Solomon was of the line of David, related to David. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh shall rise up 
in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. So the men of Nineveh, who actually decided to hear these words about the judgment coming, the physical judgment that's going to change the world and everything as we know it, The men of Nineveh who are actually going to repent, who have it in them to repent, are going to rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. You guys, if this stuff scares you, then I have a solution for you. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that hath, that feareth is not made perfect in love. So a lot of us are not made perfect in love, because there's some things that we still fear. But we can have, if we have perfect love, we will have no fear. So, well, how do you get perfect love? Well, the scriptures say you have an ambition that you cannot satisfy, so you fight, so you fight to get your way by force. Why you don't have what you want is because you don't pray for it. Pray means to ask. So if you don't have this, you haven't asked for it. So you need to take your time, spend time with the Lord, and ask Him for this. When you do pray and don't get it, it is because you have not prayed properly and have prayed for something to indulge your own desires. Which I don't think that would apply to anybody here in this message. But So if you don't have this, you, it's because you haven't prayed for it. And in Revelation 8, it says, Next I saw seven trumpets being given to the seven angels who stand in the presence of God. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. A large quantity of incense was given to him to offer with the prayers of all the saints. All the saints. So the saints on earth and the saints in heaven. On the golden altar that stood in front of the throne. The throne of the Lord. So this angel has incense. And brings it before the throne of the Lord. And so from the angel's hand, the smoke of the incense went up to the presence of God, and with it, the prayers of the saints. So at these times, you guys, the angel is taking the incense of our prayers and bringing them before God. That's why we're seeing a lot of prayers being answered right now. So if you consider... We're all called saints, you guys. Anybody who is in Christ or, 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 who, or who has the testimony is a saint or a prophet. It's the same thing, pretty much. So if you don't have perfect love, you guys, this is the most valuable. Th this is the biggest thing that God wants you to have and understand. If you don't have this, it's because you haven't prayed for it. So I love you guys, and God bless.